Hi everyone and welcome. We're here at my computer screen and I'm just running the uh, time lapse in the background here of the three chamber carbon only bin with the leaves, cardboard, and paper in it. And this original release of the video captured the first hundred days of that bin, but uh, even after that first hundred days had finished, I kept the camera running. And as of the making of this video, the uh, the time lapse has now been running for maybe about 124 days, I believe. So on top of the original 100 days, there's already more than three weeks additional footage now of uh, how things progressed. And that's the uh, that's the other video that I've got here on my computer screen. So I'm going to open that up here. And during those first few weeks, the video continued to progress as you would think it would, but not much happened there. All I added was ice to make sure that the moisture level in the bin remained comfortable for them. And they just continued consuming what was in there um, without me adding any additional materials into either of the containers. Here, my, my first reason at all for even bringing up this little um, behind-the-scenes extra footage is to show that... Uh, is to show that my next game plan here is to not do what most people have been asking about, which is to kind of dump it all out and get a, a forensic view of how things look in each chamber, compare them, etc. so on. My idea here was to do a, another thing that was sort of um, asked about, which is to continue the footage in such a way that we do add more leaves, more cardboard, and more paper, but in such a way that its size and shape doesn't uh, become a factor in terms of it being easy to break down. So rather than just putting it in as I have in the past, whole pieces of paper, whole pieces of cardboard, I'm going to attempt to grind up some of this material, put it into the blender, and see if I could come up with sort of a very fine version of each of these materials. And, and then reload this thing. Not very high up, maybe a little bit short of the tippy top, but leave enough room for two distinct layers. I'll pick two types of leaf, I'll pick two maybe leaf and cocoa core, I'll pick two types of cardboard, two types of paper to um, to create a two, two color, two layer um, feeding if you will into each chamber and then naturally add some ice too to get everything moistened so uh, it was round up uh, it was around here, the seven and a half minute mark, I believe, is where I started getting sloppy. Um, in, the, in a nearby room, I had turned on, if you look in the corner here, you could see some reflection of some of that light escaping from the grow light that is growing my seeds. And then I even went a step beyond that, and I moved aside this piece of cardboard partition that I have which uh, which was allowing the backdrop, the backdrop over here, to be uh, completely dark, but the without the partition being there, the the light from the gr grow lamp snuck in there as well. <laughs> so now we've got two um, we've got two signs of me being pretty sloppy, and then we get to a third one piled on top of all of that uh, it's right here here I must have put my hand in front of the camera or something but you could tell the color completely changes for one frame it's easy enough just to exclude that frame no big deal and then eventually uh, I figured out that hey I gotta get these things blocked up so I, I went ahead and I blocked off the uh, the partition over there and then over there too, I put up a curtain to get rid of that light pollution from <laughs> over there. And and now the bin continues this way. Um, oops, I can see I did it again, but I think I eventually get to the point where it um, it does get blocked off. So if we go downstairs to my wormery, we'll see what's going on. I've already started work on this downstairs. So let's go down there now. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff out here on the table. Most importantly on the right is the grinder. I've got some eggshells there that need grinding. And then we're going to try grinding up some of this paper and cardboard material. 
And some of the stuff that I'm considering as already fine enough is the tiny bits of leaves and the cocoa core. Eggshells I've been collecting this way for a while and then processing them in at once. Just easier that way rather than breaking out the blender mechanism repeatedly. It's just uh, easier to have a whole bunch of this stuff to go at once and, um, and then work it down to the consistency that you want. Um, what I usually like is something that's fairly fine. Uh, one of my tools here that I just don't happen to have at the moment is a sieve, a screen, and I make sure that everything that I've ground down can run through the sieve uh, before I put it aside uh, for storage. Now, I don't have the sieve, and it does take a little bit of time to shake that stuff through the sieve, and if anything that gets caught, to regrind it. And uh, one thing I noticed last time was that if I just continued grinding for a long time, then almost everything was fine enough to pass through, with the exception of just a few tiny uh, chunks. So rather than doing the sifting method, I'm going to do a little bit more of a, uh, a quick and dirty grind down of it as best I can without running it through the sifter, skipping that step. So for that reason, I'm going to uh, hang on to it in this little other jar um, and you just keep them separate so that I know. So let's, um, let's load up our grinding um, container. You can see this one has got a, a broken foot, and uh, as, far, as long as we're talking about broken feet, you can see the grinder itself has um, got a missing rubber pad off of its feet. So this is just an old um, kind of personal food blender setup that started breaking down and becoming obsolete when newer fancier stuff came online so uh, as far as I'm concerned it's perfectly good for this but before you go sacrificing your own doing this sort of stuff you should take note of how this frosted uh, material looks here so you can see right away by having the blade chopping up a really coarse material like these eggshells you can expect that you're gonna uh, frost the inside of your container so if you don't want to ruin your everyday stuff it's best to go to like a uh, garage sale flea market something like that and pick one of these up for cheap and then you could sacrifice as many of these cups as you like so all right let's grind this stuff up now before we open this container some of this is frosting, I know, but a lot of it is airborne uh, dust, particles of the eggshell itself. So if, um, if you're going to be opening this thing up in such a place where there's no good ventilation, just be careful not to breathe it in because it is uh, considered to be harmful. Very coarse material getting into your lungs can only uh, cause damage, so you don't want to do that. So always take care handling this stuff when it's been uh, ground up like this to make sure you're not breathing in any of its dust. Now, just for the um, for the sake of getting a closer look at it, I'm going to pour it out here on this newspaper, and wow, it's got some good weight to it, and it's a uh, it's pretty good particle size. There's some big chunks in here, but I'm not going to sweat it. At some point in the future, maybe I'll try to pick through it a little bit, but it's so much better than anything that I've uh, used in the past. I used to grind up all my eggshell. Um, using a mortar and pestle and to get it to this point it would take forever and a lot of elbow grease so all right let's uh let's finish off the rest of this Okay, there again, I think that's going to be adequate for demonstration purposes. And actually for everyday use, I would think that this is probably fine enough as well. While there are pieces in here that the worms will not be able to make good use of, there are most definitely uh, plenty that they can. And it's, um, it's done in two minutes, so it's nothing to it. It's very easy. Wow, that just perfectly came out. How do you like that? All right, 
still try to salvage those few pieces that landed on the uh, tabletop here. So let's do that and clean up at the same time. Okay, the rest of these little pieces are just those really uh, thin inner skin pieces. So they're not hard, calcium-rich shell. They're just little, little very thin flakes of paper-like, uh, very light consistency stuff. So, wow, look at that, awesome. Whole big baby jar full of it. And uh, I would almost say it's as good as the stuff that was all um, filtered down. All right, let's move on. The next material we've got is cardboard. We've got brown cardboard here, like from boxes, and uh, here we have an egg carton, which is more of kind of a grayish color. And I'm kind of hoping the color is going to be different enough that we can see them side by side laid into the into the container, and um, that they'll they'll look good. So let's see how they go in terms of getting chopped up. But I've also got some water here on standby just in case. I wasn't sure if such dry materials would get stuck in the blades, so I figured let's um, let's have some water on hand just in case it's needed. Here we have a huge box, not a huge box, but a fairly large amount of already finely chopped cardboard, which as it is would be great bedding in your worm bins, and that's what I'm going to be using in the future going forward, but for the sake of this little experiment, we're going to actually be trying to shred this stuff much, much finer. And I guess we're going to be going for the consistency of, you know, maybe like this cocoa core. And we don't need much, but we will need enough to fill in a layer in the time-lapse bin. So let's not overload the container. Going to try this amount at first. You can already see it's getting stuck to the top, so let's see how this goes dry. Maybe we don't need to add moisture at all. Let's see what we got so far. Might have to go with a little bit less. Ooh, we've got a pretty good amount in here. This is pretty nice the way we want it. Nice and soft and fluffy. Uh, very, uh, very fine material. So we'll put what remains back into the machine. We'll go, we won't go crazy trying to hack every little piece up to nothing, but um, let's at least get the larger pieces back in the machine for one more hack at it. weird. It's a little bit hard to get in. Not sure what's happening. You can always tell when a piece makes it down to the blade, the whole thing rattles loud when it smacks into that whole piece. Well, at this point I would think that there's very little left, if any. Such an unusual exercise, trying to shred cardboard into a really, really fine material. And I would say that we succeeded. This stuff looks pretty incredible. This stuff looks pretty fine. Very, very, very fine, as a matter of fact. The fact that we've got a few pieces this big really doesn't matter, I don't think. Awesome. Worked out well. Hopefully we could fit it all into here. Okay. From this to this. So I've got another empty tray so that we can give this stuff a try. Hopefully it goes just as easily. But I think to give ourselves a fighting chance I'm going to break it into small pieces to begin with so that seems to ensure that we get pretty good results let's 
begin with this much. Let's see what we get. Hmm. Oop. Wasn't bayoneted in. <laughs> it's weird. It's got this weird sort of bayonet. Stuff is expanded so much that it's all the way out to the top edge. It doesn't allow for much movement. So if there are large pieces remaining, then they're uh, I think they're gonna have a hard time making their way down to the blade. So let's empty it out. Wow. I found two fairly good sized pieces. Three. This one got a little bit hacked. But I would say the majority of the rest of it is pretty good. You can feel little chunks in there here and there, but nothing too big. So we'll do a little bit more. We'll hack up these few pieces that we reclaimed, and we'll uh, we'll just include a couple more of these. Hopefully these pieces aren't too big. Let's see how it goes. pieces that can go back in but a lot of it is done again it's been whipped up to a, a mass that almost completely fills the inside of the container. Hopefully we got it all though. Let's just dump it right in here with the assumption it's all good. Excellent. Very cool. Alright, so now we've got our cardboard all ground up. Let's finish off with the paper. So we haven't had to use our moisture yet, but we'll see how it goes now with the paper. This is newspaper. It's already been run through a shredder or torn up or something, so it's already fairly small in size. But I'm assuming we're going to end up with a, a fluffy pile of stuff, just like the cardboard when we do the paper. I'm sure there's not going to be a great deal of difference. Whatever we wind up with can go into here. Here too, I believe it's probably a good idea to start small with a small amount and see how it goes before we try to jam it full and then get terrible results. Here I can almost see me needing a little bit of water to probably help things along, but let's try it as is and see what we get. Interesting. It's breaking it down pretty nicely. Seems like the big pieces are finding their way down to the blade. I'm wondering if instead of emptying it, if I could just add to it. Let's try that. Okay, here again, it's about as much as we started with, but I don't want to overstuff it. Try it again. This stuff looks pretty good too. Seemed like it got ground down pretty completely. Let's see how it turned out. Hmm, pretty good. Maybe we'll dump it straight into its container. Doesn't look like we'll have to pick through it. I don't see any remnants of large pieces. It looks like they all got ground down pretty easily. All right. Small portions it is.
we're pretty full. Maybe it would make good sense just to spill it out first before adding it to the collection. Maybe there are still pieces that didn't get hacked all the way up. So yeah, here's one. And another, but really it did a good job. Got most of it. Why don't we do one more small batch? Just to get these couple pieces that were left behind and enough to make it worth doing one more time. But definitely not a lot at all. I'm confident enough that I'm just going to dump it straight in. Okay, so now we've got some ground up newspaper, sort of paper. We need one for one more kind of paper. So now the last thing we're going to want to chop up is some white paper. And we'll uh, place that into here. Now this stuff is cut into fairly long strands. I hope that doesn't become a, an issue with it trying to jam up against the walls. So I'm going to try not to bend it if I don't have to. I also don't want it to get caught up in these threads. I don't think that'll happen though because the threads are on the outside. So hopefully by not over stuffing it, we can at least get a start. Let's see how that goes. Well, it seems like it's working it. Okay, what we'll do again, like we did with the shredded newspaper, is we'll just add a little bit to what's already been chopped up while at the same time not overloading it. We'll try to accumulate a decent amount slowly. But rather than just, oops, careful. <laughs> rather than um Getting into an overloaded state, let's start emptying it and checking it out. Looks good, it's all fine. Tiny, tiny stuff. a few pieces in there that didn't get hacked hopefully these big pieces we're adding now will help get the last bits of it all chopped up nicely got some good stuff accumulating here it's interesting it's pretty warm you would think that that you know cutting through a little bit of paper is like no big deal for that metal blade but the fact that it's getting so warm I guess might, might have something to do with this yeah okay let's, <laughs> let's not let this stuff get cranked up onto the uh, the shaft that's probably where we're experiencing the friction and the buildup of heat I'm glad I noticed that would have been very easy to overlook. Okay, hopefully I'm not overstuffing it. Pretty good stuff, nice and fine. I'll try to do a little bit more. Still some pieces in there that need continued grinding. It's just this that worries me is the, um, the pieces getting wrapped around the shaft and clearly making a fair amount of heat in the process. Building up a bunch of unnecessary heat. So let's 
Let's see if we can hack this remaining bit up and then we'll call it quits with the paper. With the paper. <laughs> we'll call it quits with the paper. So on that go around, we didn't get any sticking to the shaft or to the center because I believe we had enough small, tiny pieces that it wouldn't. So whatever, I guess that's that. Here's what we ended up with on the white copy paper side. All very light, fluffy, airy stuff. So we're, um, I think we're now at the point where we can really consider ourselves ready for reloading the time-lapse bin. We've got two types of paper, light colored copy paper as well as some darker colored newspaper. Next to that would have the two different types of cardboard. Again, two different types of colors. And then here too, the leaves are a little bit lighter in color than the cocoa core. So that'll uh, top off our reload on the three chamber carbon only time lapse bin. So now I think we're all set to go. We've got material for all three compartments. We can even add grit if we like. And um, it's just a matter of reloading the bin. Ice cubes will be the last component because we'll need to moisten all this very dry material too. But um, yeah, I'll save all of that for a future video or maybe just leave it for another sneak preview in the future. So. With that, why don't we uh, wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. I always really appreciate it. Um, always consider giving me a thumbs up because that's always really appreciated as well. And consider becoming a subscriber to the channel too. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.